If you're watching this, you have probably heard of the train test split in the context of machine learning, which is fairly intuitive. During training, you show some examples to your model to let it learn and improve on these examples. But you keep some data separate for testing to find out how good your model would be on unseen data like it would encounter in the wild in production if it's live. But there is one more data split that is used and that is the train validation test split or sometimes this is achieved by using cross validation. Let's look at why you would need a separate validation data set. First off, a quick overview. The training data set is used for the models to learn the task. The validation data set is used by you as a developer to decide which model is the best for the task and then we still keep a holdout test data set to see how good is this model truly. Now you might ask, why can I not just use the training data set to decide which model is best? After all, they will each get a training score or a training loss and I can compare those, right? To understand this, let's imagine a scenario where you are perhaps a teacher and you have a group of students and you want to decide who of those students is the best because you want to send one of them to a national competition and of course you want to ideally win this competition. To prepare your students, you give them training questions, for example, from last year's competition. The students all study those same training questions to improve and get better at the task they need to solve. Afterwards, you can of course quiz your students on those specific questions and that would give you a training score. Now, it's likely that most students will do well on those training questions because they have studied them for a long time. Here, this is indicated by green bubbles. But what do those green bubbles tell you? A green bubble could either mean that the student just learned those specific questions by heart, or ideally it would mean that your student understood the material and can apply it in the competition to new questions. By only using the training data to quiz them, you will not be able to distinguish between those two cases. Instead, what you should do is give them new questions that they haven't seen before, which will be your validation data set. And then you receive a validation score for each of those students, which are the models in our case, and you can decide who is the best on unseen data, and that will be our chosen model or student for the competition. Let's recap this in more machine learning terms. The training data set is used to choose the best parameters for the examples that you have. But the issue is that they can be learned by heart, which is also called overfitting in machine learning. The validation data set, on the other hand, is used to choose the best hyperparameters, for example, how many layers your neural network has or how many parameters or degrees your linear regression has. It can also be used to compare completely different models like linear regression versus neural networks, for example. But now we still have the open question of how good will our student truly be in the competition? And that is where we use the test data. You might ask why we even need to test. After all, we've chosen our best model, our best student, and that's the best we can do. So we might as well just send it off, right? So let's say our student, our model, only gets a 30% score on the test data. That means they likely won't win and they won't do well. And maybe you should just not attend and maybe prepare your students again and try again next year where you have a real chance of winning. In machine learning, this could mean that you should maybe revise your experiment and collect new training data, better training data, and then try again, because as it is now, your model would not do well in business decisions and it would likely cost you money if you put it into production. On the other hand, if your student or model does really well on the test data set, like it gets an 86%, then the student will likely do well in the competition and you're good to send them off. In machine learning context, this could mean that your model is better than the previous one or that you can already see that it will save money for your company or reduce accidents or whatever else you trained it to do. This is the true final test that will be as close as the real thing later on in the wild as you can get and it makes sure that you didn't just choose a good model for the validation data set 
but it is also good on unseen data. So let's recap again. We've already seen training data is for the parameters, validation data is for choosing the model, and now test data is to estimate the true final performance on unseen data as close as you can get to what it would be like in production. And it can make a difference between putting it into production and scrapping the whole experiment and starting from fresh. What you are not allowed to do is to adjust your model because then you would merge your validation and test data set and you would lose this final true performance test. This issue is also called data leakage and should be very much avoided. All right, now that you know everything about the train validation test split, you're good to go. Go and train some models and I'll see you in the next video.